Hello guys, today we will analyze the code of open source project called Azurium, which is web solution for game servers, pretty popular. This is how it looks, and this is written in Laravel. So if you scroll up, you can recognize the familiar folder and file structure. The project is pretty old, you can see commits from six years ago, but it is pretty popular with 600 stars, and there are quite a few things that we can learn from that from Laravel. In my opinion, analyzing open source projects is one of the best ways to learn Laravel or in general coding. And that's why whenever I see new open source projects somewhere online, I mean the project, not the package, we collect them on Laravel daily. So we have a separate page with 69 projects currently in resources, open source projects. So you can go here, you can sort by GitHub stars or by newest added, and you can see that Azurium here. And we not only collect the projects, we try to categorize the code snippets. So you can click view examples of that Azurium. And here's the table of contents kind of for this video, what we will be talking about. So from that project code, I will show example of custom casting, trades, email notifications, and here how you can override the email verification of Laravel, then custom artisan command that could be scheduled every minute, and polymorphic relationships example with trait attached and policies. So let's see what's inside. If we click view example here, again, we try to categorize and provide code snippets of that particular part of class of file that is relevant to that specific topic of casting. And also each file has a link to GitHub. And this is by the way, free, no membership required. So I will link that in the description below. Obviously we cannot put a paywall on something that is open source already. And it's not even our code. We just showcase it. So yeah, topic number one, custom casting. So you can create a cast class to get and set value. For example, here for color. So yeah, get function is transforming the data from the database. And then set is called whenever you want to save the value. In this case, if someone provides the color, it removes the hash in the beginning and also transforms the short colors. For example, if someone supplies the color of 000, which is black, but in short form, it would transform to six zeros instead of three. And then you can use that custom cast in eloquent model in the casts array to enable this transformation. It kind of is similar to eloquent accessors and mutators. So attributes, but how I personally would define the difference is that in casts, you can provide more logic. And if that code is pretty long, it may be beneficial to offload this to a separate class instead of having longer code in eloquent model. What do you think? For this example, would you prefer casting or eloquent accessors and mutators? We can discuss in the comments below. The second example is traits. And if we click view example, we can see loggable trait. And this is kind of a trick with Laravel that if you have a trait and if you have boot as prefix, then if you put that trait into eloquent model, then that function will be executed as boot method of that model. So in this case, what that trait does is on the event of created, updated and deleted, it logs some information. And also that trait has protected kind of private functions to should log attribute, create log entries, and is valid log type. So trait may be not just with one function, but more than this. And then you add that trait to whatever eloquent models you want. And this is kind of the point. One of the most typical use cases of traits is when code is reusable in multiple eloquent models or in multiple files. Example number three from Azurium code is about email notifications, but not any notification, notification which overrides the email verification from default Laravel. So you can create a typical notification with PHP Artisan make notification, and it should extend notification. But in this case, notification is an alias to verify email notification from Laravel. So there's a typical function in Laravel that you can enable to verify email after the registration. But this is how you can customize that email text. So you can override the method of build mail message from class verify email and provide whatever mail message you want. And then in your user model, there's another thing to override that user model still should implement must verify email from Laravel, but you override the method send email verification notification, passing your own class that you saw just here above. Example number four from Azurium. I'm sorry for my voice. I'm kind of losing it, but 
still should be a useful video. Anyway, custom artisan command. So there's a command of game ping, which has a description of ping the game servers to update their stats. And here the logic is to get the list of servers. Pingable is probably a local scope. And then for each server, there is a method update data. It doesn't really matter that much what that does. This is an example of custom artisan command, which you can then schedule. There's a file, app, console, kernel. And by the way, Azurium is currently on Laravel 11 version, but in many places still use older structure like console kernel. So in Laravel 11 and 12, the default skeleton will tell you to do that in routes console PHP file. So app console kernel doesn't even exist since Laravel 11. But if you prefer that older way, it still works in the newer Laravel version. It's not deprecated. So this is how you schedule Laravel commands. For example, this one is executed every minute. And under the hood, it is powered by a cron job that executes on the server every minute to check for all the scheduled commands. Code snippet example number five from Azurium is about polymorphic relationships, but not just any polymorphic, again with a twist. So this is a typical attachments table for polymorphic relationships. So attachments could be attached to various eloquent models. And there's attachment as a separate model with attachable morph two, and also one protected function. But then there's a trait attachable again with boot prefix, similar like we saw a few minutes ago, which uses model attachments and also has logic for trash to restore and delete. So this is updated function. And then on deleted, it has force delete. Not only that, we have a function of store pending attachment, persist attachments. So basically custom logic in a trait related to those attachments. And one of the functions is actually attachments. It reminds a little bit of Spotty Media Library, where media model has a lot of functions inside. And also there's has media trait from what I remember, doing similar things. And then that trait is attached to multiple models. In this case, in case of this project is two models. So models page and post both use attachable here. And then in controller, for example, you can do something like this page model and call page store attachment, which will come from the trait, which uses polymorphic relation. With this flexibility, you can attach use attachable to more models in the future to get the same behavior. And the final example number six will be about policies, but not that much about policy. Again, I have a twist here. So here's a typical policy to comments. And this is a proof that you don't have to define many methods in the policy. It doesn't have to be all create view update and other it depends on your situation. So create and delete is totally fine. But what I want to emphasize in the app service provider, no matter what gates or policies you use, you can override them for super admin. So you can define gate before and if user admin, you return true no matter what, then Laravel doesn't even take into account gates and permissions, then that user admin has access to whatever feature. And then in this case, that policy is used like this, which is again, older Laravel syntax from Laravel 10 and before, because default Laravel controller used to look like this, which contained a few traits like authorizes requests, which has some functions like this authorize or this authorize resource. So you can still use that in Laravel 11 and 12. But then you need to manually add a few traits to your main base controller, and then you would have access to this authorized resource. So yeah, what do you think about the code of this project from those examples? Have you learned anything new? We can discuss in the comments below. And of course, I will link the project GitHub so you can take a look yourself about the project itself. Maybe you're into gaming, so it would be interesting maybe for you to use or to just browse around more code of Azurium. And also, of course, you may browse around more open source projects on Laravel daily. Again, it's free, no membership required resources open source projects, and we categorized it by stack, for example, for react JS, there are a few projects specifically using react, or you can click any example just from here. And then also on top, you may click the tag of that example, and you will land on all examples by that specific tag of traits, for example. And again, those examples will be from the same open source projects, just from a different angle, not by project, but by topic. If you have any ideas how to improve this section of Laravel daily website, again, let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.